I'd like. Oh, got it. Got it first. Okay. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. I would like to welcome you to June 10th's meeting. This is the first time that I'm doing this. And so I'm reading through Eric's notes as I go. I would like to go ahead and begin the meeting and officially call the meeting to order. I'm going to introduce our Toastmaster this morning, who is Marty, if I'm not mistaken. And then you introduce our inspiration, Stephen. All right. And then I would also like to bring Steve as our inspirational speaker this morning to inspire us. Thank you. I got up this morning around five o'clock to go down to the lake and view an annular eclipse of the sun. Now, an annular eclipse is when the moon's a little further away from us and it isn't big enough to fully cover the sun. So there's a ring of light around the sun, very visible, which means you can't just stare at it, you need the protection. But regardless, it was a beautiful sight. The sun rose fully as full as it was going to get eclipsed. And I found that very inspirational because in spite of all our problems, in spite of all that's going on in the world and what we're putting up with, the universe just keeps cranking along right on time, right on schedule, doing what it's always done. I think we should be the same way. Everything that's going on is temporary. This will pass and we just keep going on with our lives, doing what we've always done, just like we're doing this morning and meeting here with each other. And that's my word of the day. Just carry on. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to begin the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, our God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ryan, I've got an announcement, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are there any guests today before I jump into announcements? All right. Well, then the floor is yours. Thank Sorry. you. On Saturday, November 6th, the Barker Lions are planning a bus trip down to Jamestown. We will be seeing the Comedy Museum, having lunch in the Tropicana Room, having a tour of the city, and then doing the Lucy and Desi Museum. If anybody is interested, let me know. It is $129 for everything, including the lunch. We'll be leaving Barker probably around seven o'clock in the morning, getting back about eight o'clock at night. We only have 55 spots to fill, but I just thought it's public speaking, it's humor. If anybody's interested, let me know. What was that date again, Margo? Saturday, November 6th. All right. if, I, if I may, a quick aside, it is worthwhile going to the museums. There are wonderful restaurants in Jamestown, and going by the Lucy House is a hoot, just an endorsement. Excellent. Any other announcements this morning? I do have an announcement. Thank you, Ryan. We have social hour again tonight. We're only doing it for probably a few more Thursdays in June, unless somebody else will take that on. Uh, then we can have our summers off. Maybe we'll meet again in person. The committee is working hard at planning our moving into in person. Looks like we won't be doing that right away on the first week of July, but per prospects look like the second week of July, but more information coming about that. Officers training, they're offering something special this year. And so I'll email that to our officers, but they're doing a Saturday morning or a Tuesday evening option. So that's uh, wonderful in the summer. A lot of us would rather be doing anything else on a Saturday morning than sitting on a Zoom <clears throat> meeting. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Vice President of Membership. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any final announcements before I hand the meeting over to our Toastmaster of the day? 
three, two, one. I'd like to now introduce Marty Johnston. Marty Johnson is our Toastmaster of the day. Marty, take it away. Thank you, Ryan. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Thank you, everyone, for participating this morning and those that stepped up to fill roles. Much appreciated. <clears throat> I chose the theme for the meeting is Flag Day. Flag Day is celebrated in the United States every Monday on June 14th. As you can see, I have a small flag behind me. It may not be totally appropriate way to hang the flag or to, it's supposed to be flying actually. However, there's a little story I'd like to share behind this flag. This flag or some that are similar to it, I believe I acquired through my fraternity through the Knights of Columbus. I think it was a leftover. I had a couple from one of our cemetery walks where we honored the deceased that served the country and I think I had a couple extra. What I do with this flag, I have it out in front of my apartment near my mailbox and I use it in the early spring, actually in February, I, I try to put it in the ground because I have some, some plants that come up and I don't want the mailman to step on my on my plant. So I put this here so we can see the plants that are coming up and it, it's worked over the last few years. So that's the story behind my plant. Uh, as I said, Flag Day is Monday, June 14th. Feel free to fly your flag, uh, not only on Flag Day, but any day, long as it is in good condition, fly your flag. Or I know we have some members that are not uh, traditionally from the United States. And I'm sure that, uh, well, I'm not sure, but I appreciate your national heritage and any flag that you fly as well. I'd like to make a toast. If any, everyone has a glass or a cup of something, raise your cup. I'd like to make a toast to being proud to fly our flag. May we continue to educate our family members, our, our younger children, that way, someday too, they will carry on their tradition to feel proud to fly the flag. Here, here. Yeah. At this point, I'd like to call on our job holders. Our first job holder is our word master, Kate Orr. What is the word you chose for the meeting, Kate? Thank you so much, Marty. The word of the day is solidarity. I will put that in the chat. In solidarity, this Saturday, many of our club members will be going to the funeral for Charlie at 10 a.m. and the family ceremony memorial celebration at 1 p.m. in Cambria. There was some confusion that that was canceled, but it is on. Jackie Kenny confirmed it with me. I will uh, be taking any questions about that. I was remiss and didn't announce it during my announcements. But if you have any questions, we will show solidarity by wearing our pins, badges, shirts. Buffalo funeral, 10 a.m., Cambria ceremony after. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Kate. Everyone try to use the word solidarity when you have a chance to speak today. Our next Job holder is our general evaluator, Margo Bittner. Good morning, everyone. He wanted to make sure he got this right out of the way. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> My job today is to evaluate the Toastmaster, the tone of the meeting, how it's run, but more importantly, to evaluate the evaluators because while they are helping everyone to grow, I can help them to grow. Evaluation is one of our more important skills. <clears throat> so Mr. Toastmaster, I'll be reporting at the end of the meeting whenever you call on me. Thank you. Thank you, Margo. Our next roll holder is our ah master, Steve Smith. No, actually, Jill Roaring is Jill, the ah master. Jill, Jill Roaring. <laughs> yeah, Steve just did inspiration. My job, fellow Toastmasters, is to keep track of all of the gaps in other interesting ways that we have of extending our speeches while we are talking without making any 
impact to the speech or actually making a negative impact to the speech. Crutch words, as Steve says. I will be reporting back at the end of the meeting and all the ahs and ums and pregnant pauses and those other crutch words. So, so? No, I don't think I'm going to count the so's. Back to you, Mr. Marty. Thank you, Jill. Uh, next, we have our grammarian, Beth Banks. Beth, what, what is your role as grammarian? Beth? Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. My role as grammarian is to report on both exceptional and poor uses of grammar today. So hopefully I will be paying close attention and hear all those examples. I apologize, I'll not be able to stand in solidarity on Saturday with everyone going to the services because we will be going to the Celtic Fair at Genesee Country Village. Good morning. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Beth. And next, our quote master, Len Thornton. Len. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. I have a couple quotes today regarding the flag. The first one is from James Bryce. Patriotism, patriotism consists not in waving the flag, but in striving that our country shall be righteous as well as strong. And the next one is from Calvin Coolidge. We identify the flag with almost everything we hold dear on earth, peace, security, liberty, our family, our friends, our home. But when we look at our flag and behold it emblazoned with all our rights, we must remember that it is, it is equally a symbol of our duties. Every glory that we associate with it is the result of duty done. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Len. Next, our jester. Jen Zapla. Yes, good morning, everyone. I have some fun Flag Day jokes for you today. So hopefully you'll join in some solidarity and laugh together. How is a flag like Santa Claus? They both hang out at the pole. Okay. <laughs> what did one flag say to the other flag? Nothing, it just waved. <laughs> and finally, this is my favorite. What's the best part about living in Switzerland? Well, the flag is a big plus. <laughs> All right. Uh, Thank you, Jen. And thanks for filling in as Jester this morning. Thank you. And our timer, Phil Russell keeping us on time this morning. All right, the timing today, I too will not be in solidarity with going on Saturday. I have to go and meet our new niece. So we'll be going to skinny up list for that. Now, timing, we do table topics and the timing for table topics will be one, it's one to one thirty two two minutes. The green light, and I'll go into that and give you an example. I can figure out my technology, which would be great. Will be one minute and 30 seconds will be green. The yellow will go on green. Yellow will go on at 145. And at two minutes, wrap it up. You have 15 seconds will be the red light. When we go to the speeches, they're normally five to seven minutes. Larry has already told me speaker number one will be four to six. So he will be at four, five, and six. And with the evaluators, they will be two to three minutes, and it will be two, two thirty, and three to wrap it up. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Phil. And next, our tech and gesture master, David Jones, another member who stepped up to fill in the role. David, thank you. Please explain your role as tech and gesture master. Good morning, uh, Mr. Toastmaster, and good morning, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I will be the tech and gesture master. 
I'll be looking at our technology, the audio visual, as well as our body language and facial expressions and any type of gestures and report back to you later. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, David. And next, our quiz master, Larry Eggert, who's going to keep it, going to keep us our attention. Larry Eggert, please explain your role as quiz master. Larry. Good morning, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. I am the quiz master for today. <clears throat> and it's really early in the morning, <clears throat> and I haven't had my cup of tea yet. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I will be listening throughout the meeting for tidbits of information. And at the end of the meeting, hopefully we will all be in solidarity in being able to answer all of my questions. And I will report back at the end, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Larry. Moving into one of our favorite portions of the meeting is our table topics master, Gerald Stevens. Please explain your role, Gerald. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters, and we have no guests. The role of my role today is to give you a few questions to speak off the cuff here. And I only have three people to choose from. So everybody doesn't have a job is going to be picked today. <laughs> so I decided to change it up a little bit, not too much about the flag per se, but to me, around this time of year, Flag Day is close enough to summertime. I guess it officially begins on the 21st of June. We're going to ask a few questions about summer in general. So, Chris, you're my first table topics participant today, Chris de Glopper Banks. Summer officially begins June 21st. As it has been warm already, I feel like it's already started. If you had to pick, what would be your favorite sum act, summer activity? And maybe you have more than one. So feel free to talk about that for us today. Well, good morning. And thank you for allowing me to answer these questions. Um, I would say my favorite summer activity is reading outside. I know I'm a librarian and it seems kind of obvious, but having the ability to sit out on the back deck and be in nature and to see everything and just feel the warmth of the sun and reading a good book and getting lost in it is one of my favorite activities over the summer. I can't say that there's one that is more than the rest, but I do stand in solidarity with all my other librarian friends who enjoy reading over the summer for pleasure because a lot of times what I'm reading is more for work, whether it is picture books, especially about summer, reading to the kids, but, um, and reading for myself is one of my favorite things outside in my backyard in nature. Thank you. Second question is for Tom, Tom Heldwin, Heldwine. Summertime brings summer food, grilling, barbecue, all types of options. Do you have a fa favorite summer food or maybe even a favorite summer restaurant you would like to tell us about? Tom. Oh, he's driving. No, I am not. I actually pulled over and parked in the shade so there was no glare. Well, as everyone knows who's seen me in person, I am of the larger persuasion, and I have actually made the statement that never, ever trust a thin chef. So in that spirit of keeping, summer foods are some of the best there are. I love outdoor barbecue barbecue is delicious barbecue falls falling off the meat especially like ribs yeah you can get them at a restaurant you can get them somewhere else they are delicious but the number one is when you get them at home and you do it over like charcoal um i've had the hawaiian method where they put they put it underground and they big up the pig from the under the under the ground not 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 my thing 
it's good, but it's not my thing. Then you have just cooking burgers and hot dogs. I always do the cool spiral cut before you cook it so that when it, it plumps up, it looks really like almost like a candy cane. Um, the, I have to go the opposite direction, though. The, the most disgusting summer food has to be things that are made with like noodles and mayonnaise and um, other weird things that they put out in the sun. Who puts mayonnaise in something and then puts it in the sun for like two hours? That that is just disgusting. After a very short period of time, I'm like, that th- what you have a mental disease, and uh, so to be in solidarity with everyone, I'm gonna say that this barbecue is probably the number one symbol food for most holidays. Hot dogs and hamburgers maybe come a close second. Well, that barbecue is number one. Thank you, Mr. Subjects Master. Thank you, Tom. And my third question is from Moklis. He's an international kind of guy, international traveler. Summer brings vacations, maybe a little more than before. Now that COVID is relaxing a little bit. So I would like to know if Moklis has any plans. And if he doesn't have plans, what would be his dream vacation? Moklis. Thank you, Mr. Table Topic Master, Master, my favorite vacation. Probably it got to be Hawaii. Maybe not in the summer, but in the winter. In summer, I would try I probably like to go to Canada. I love up Toronto. Since I moved to the Western New York in Rochester, 1981, that's almost 40 years ago. Every visit to Toronto was superbly enjoyable, learning, and of course, foods the law. The best place in Toronto was now known as Little India. It's called Gerard Street. I remember one scene with Samir. We went and bought a box of mango. Before we could put it in that car, Samir grabbed one and started eating with the skin and everything. We came to the border. The border would not allow us to bring it into the US. So we just parked on the side and finished the whole box together as a family. (laughs) Toronto has beautiful museum, science museum and the wonderland north of Toronto by the lake. It's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I am waiting for the day that the Canadian border opens and my first trip is going to be to the Little India in Toronto. Thank you, Mr. Tabletop Master and fellow Toastmaster. Thank you all our Table Topics participants. If I could have a word master report to start off first, did all our Table Topics participants use the word solidarity? Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Christine, our newest member, used the word, and also Thomas did. Moklis, did you? I was so engaged in the story, I am not sure, but he did use it in the chat, so I'm not sure. We might as well, if you already have the poll set up, go ahead, (laughs) and our poll can go up as long as they made time. You did? You're good at using it, so... Okay, so before you vote, uh, if I could get a report for the timer, why, thank you, Mr. Topics Master. Chris, 112, you needed three seconds more. We had one at a district level called her two seconds Susie. She went over by two seconds and she was the winner, but she didn't win because of time. Thomas, he came in at 203, and Moklis, he came in at 157. So, as far as time is concerned, Thomas and Moklis. Mr. Tabletopics Master. 
Take a second to select uh, Thomas or Moklas for your favorite table topics. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I was a little fast with the poll. I apologize. Well, I also said, just run the poll as is. My bad. No worries. We can adapt. I'd like to turn the, the floor over back to Marty. It's all you, Marty. <clears throat> thank you, Gerald. And thank you to our table topics participants. One might ask, why celebrate Flag Day? As I mentioned, Flag Day is celebrated each, each year on June 14th. And according to a uh, Google search, our favorite friend, my favorite friend, it commemorates what they say is the adoption of the flag of the United States uh, from June 14th, 1777. That was by a resolution of the Second Continental Congress. And secondly, the, the the other significant part of that and why we celebrate it is that the stars and stripes became the official flag of the US, United States of America. And that's one of the other reasons why uh, we celebrate Flag Day on June 14th each year. The other thing I, I think is relevant at this point and to be in solidarity with our business people, I think that if anyone needs a flag, they could help support any local businesses that do sell flags, any retailers or any online companies by purchasing a new flag, if you need one. Uh, a good friend of mine who's in my fraternity actually has a flag company and actually I'll put it in the chat just to, to save time. But anyway, he has a, a flag company and I, I guess he does, he, he does okay with it. Just on a, I don't know, his wife works full time. I don't know how much revenue he generates from it, but apparently he's been in business for a number of years. So he must be, must be doing okay, making a go at it. At this point is I'd like to introduce our evaluation team one by one and moving into our speaking portion of the meeting. Our first evaluator is Mike Licata and Mike will be evaluating Larry McKenzie's speech. Mike, please let us know what Larry will be working on this morning. Mike. Good morning, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. This morning, Larry is Starting his new path with the engaging humor level one, the icebreaker. Mr. Timer, the time is four to six minutes. And I do believe you have his title, correct? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mike. Larry McKenzie, I'm sure will bring some humor into this speech. Larry, many of you know and have heard him speak before, is a great storyteller in my opinion. And he always, always comes through and uses stories in his speeches. Almost every speech that I can remember, there's a story. As part of Larry's introduction, it's an icebreaker with a twist. And audience participation is requested. Are you ready? Larry McKenzie, what's my line? It's a four to six minute speech. What's my line, Larry McKenzie? Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Good morning, everyone. My name is Larry McKenzie. In case you don't know me, probably you do. And if you don't, well, I'm still gonna need your help. Here's what we're gonna do today. Typically a and icebreaker is where we come out and we explain about who we are and what we do and things. I, I think most of us have heard some of our icebreakers before and I didn't wanna be repetitive. So I'm gonna do an icebreaker with a twist. I need your help. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and see how I can test my own impromptu speaking because I'm gonna open up the floor to all of our Toastmasters that are here today. And I want you to do Unmute yourself if you feel like you wanna just throw out a topic or a question for me, and I will expand on it if it's something about me or something you just wanna hear me talk about spontaneously. Let's go. 
who's up first? Give me something to talk about. And I am going to use that as my icebreaker today. Who wants to be my, oh, my, oh Phil, jump in. Underwater sailing. Underwater sailing. Well, I must tell you, underwater sailing. I, I'm sure glad that you asked me about that, Phil, because what was it, two years ago, I had the opportunity. We won a cruise to go down and I uh, on the Western Caribbean. And what ended up happening was I flew down to Puerto Rico, got on the cruise ship, and then we went out on the huge boat and we're out there sailing around. And I looked around and I said, this is really cool. And they had these offshore excursions that were available. And I said, wow, it would be fun to do something like that. And they had a contest on board that we won. We had the, uh, the opportunity to go out on this uh, like pontoon boat. And they took us out into the, uh, the beach area. And we had the opportunity to put on these snorkels and everything else and to go swimming with the fishies. And it was underwater sailing for me because I had to put flippers on and everything else. I didn't know what to do. I got all this on and then they said, well, you jump in and then you snorkel. I would never done this before. And I was like a whale on the beach because what ended up happening is, is when I got into the water, I, they said, you got to flop this and this and that. And so what I was doing, I was pretty much sailing up and down and the water was going inside of my snorkel. I was starting to gag a little bit. And before they, you go in to do the snorkeling, they advise you to put a little bit of like soap detergent thing here. So it makes a good seal. Well, I forgot to do that. And so I was pretty much starting to drown underwater and flip-flopping. And the next thing I know, this person is lifting me and elevating me out of the water and they said are you okay and I, I couldn't understand why anyone would actually do that and have fun with what I would call not really underwater sailing but underwater snorkeling thanks for that question Phil does anyone else have a question that they might want to throw out to me let me see raise a hand anybody throw out a question or something oh Thomas Heldwine give me something Yes. Instead of wearing clothes, wearing food. Wearing food. I have to tell you, over the years, I've been what is considered a portly gentleman. Now, portly means that I, I, I have a few extra roles than some people have, and that's not from the bakery. And I have this wonderful thing that most people may not experience. Whenever I happen to eat certain foods or different things, and it seems like it's coming to here. Sometimes it seems to fall and I get to catch it on my shirt, which is really interesting because when that happens, when my wife always used to say, look, you got to stain on your shirt. And I said, yes, but then I can remember I had chili. I had, it doesn't quite work, but uh, I'm hopefully going to be changing that path with my upcoming dietary needs, which I've been changing over the last six to seven weeks and more deals to uh, details to that will be coming and i hope that most of you will stand in solidarity with me with that as i continue my path to a slimmer svelte self so thank you very much mr russell for that question and as you can see behind me what's my line if you remember that show from way back when it was a tv program where basically somebody would come on and they would talk about what they do. And sometimes the, the panelists would have blindfolds on. They would talk about what they would do and things. And you would either have to guess who the celebrity is or what they did. And today I did my own twist on what's my line because what I wanted you to do is toss me a question and see how I would respond. And I wanna thank my participants for helping me with that. And I encourage each and every one of our Toastmaster friends to try that sometime where it's similar to your table topics where you're put on the spot, but keep challenging yourself. It'll make us a better speaker. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Larry. Our next speaker is Ryan Flory. Ryan will be evaluated by David Licata.
already then. I asked my son, Mike, who's uh, more technically gifted, to see if Ryan had put up his uh, parameters uh, for my guidance so I could evaluate him. But when we got to the computer, the shelf was bare. So if Ryan wants to take a moment and explain to me what he wants me to look out for today, I'll be happy to listen. Good morning, my most esteemed and fantastic evaluator. This morning, <laughs> this morning, I will be giving a speech from the Persuasive Influence Level 1. It is a, uh, let me see how they phrase it directly. It is a research and presenting uh, speech. It's five to seven minutes, and it is to present a well-organized speech on a well-researched topic. The title of my speech this morning is A New Opportunity. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, David. For those of you that have been with our club, I'm sure you've seen the growth in Ryan, not only with his speech development, but also with his leadership, leadership skills becoming a club officer. I'm interested to hear what Ryan has to say this morning on his project dealing with research and presenting. The title, A New Opportunity, five to seven minute speech. Ryan Flory, A New Opportunity. We're all creatures of habit, right? We typically say, take the same paths to work. We eat the same foods. We tend to go to the same restaurants. But we all, in varying degrees, want new experiences. Some of us will try that new restaurant that just opened. Some of us will take the scenic route. Some of us will go outside and experience something. Adults learn very differently than people going through school, than kids, right? Until we're 18, 19, 20, 27. And you're going through your high school courses, hopefully not at 27, and you're starting to absorb things. And one of the reasons why you can absorb things so well through your early and mid 20s is something called neuroelasticity. Your brain is a giant plastic sponge, not the credit card plastic or the stuff with the BPAs in it that's going to seep into your system. But it's a plastic, hardwired, massive organ that sits in what I have, unfortunately, as a massive head. And as we grow, as we get older, it starts to become harder to make new connections. We have hardwired ourselves so well that as we learn different things and keep repeating certain tasks, it becomes second nature. You might hear it called muscle memory. It might be second nature to you to take a specific route. You might find yourselves leaving your driveway and five minutes later, you're somewhere on your way to work, even though you're meaning to go to the grocery store. It was autopilot, right? Our brains do these things for us to make life easier or to get us lost in the wrong direction. However, there's a couple other things that make learning for adults a little bit harder, right? As we come out of our shells, one thing that none of us like is learning about contradictions. If we've known something for five, 10, 30 years, and we learn something that's contrary to it, it's tougher for us to absorb. Our brain isn't wired that way. It's not something we're used to. Our cells are all standing in solidarity going like this. We don't wanna hear it. But what we found is impactful and meaningful in learning as adults is a combination of people both like-minded and 
with different experiences than we ourselves have. It's a phenomenon where you surround yourself with a little bit of everything. Variety, which I've heard some people say is the spice of life, is also the best way to learn. Perspective, opinion, fact, all brought together to give you the ability to form your own outlook and opinion. But let's be honest, enough information and enough knowledge can come from everywhere. One of the things that we're faced with now as adult learners in the 2020 decade is sourcing. What does it mean? What's a good source anymore? We have what used to be considered a trusted media outlet running stories with a single source that might not even be verified. And now it's all over the news. And sure, a day later, they, they bring back a correction. They fix what they might have mistaken. But what is a trusted source anymore? Is it a scholarly journal? Well, who's funding the university? With everything online and at the touch of a button, there's a lot of different opinions, articles, and sources out there. And when I was reading through several different university scholarly articles last night, what they found was that people that can source the same information from three different places are more likely to have factual data than somebody that can only source it from one. And unfortunately, in our society, over 70% of people believe and hold to be true information they've seen only from one source, regardless of its excuse me, regardless of its, of its educational or scholarly background. But keeping aside sourcing as well, let's be honest. A lot of us are busy. A lot of us have things going on. We've got jobs, we've got grandkids, we've got kids, we've got lives, we've got to feed ourselves. We've got to make meals and plan things and go on vacation to relax so we don't have to do all those things. But what ends up happening? We end up planning and sourcing and shopping and vacations become hectic. And time is one of the biggest drawbacks to adult learning. It often leads to single source learning. It often leads to contradictory, contradictorily held beliefs. And so as we look about we have to frame in our own educational paths as adults a little bit differently than we did when we were younger. We have to make sure that we develop time and patterns to learn about those things that are important to us. We used to phrase things as problems that needed solving. And now, as a more optimistic outlook on that, we look at everything as a new opportunity. It's another chance to live, to learn, and to grow as an adult. But we have to erase our self-doubt. We have to make sure that we find the time, the resources, and the support to get through that. Because every problem might be an opportunity, but we have to give ourselves that opportunity. Thank you, Ryan. Our, our next speaker is Tom Moran, who will be evaluated by Samir Rahman. I've known Tom Moran for over 20 years. I feel, in my opinion, Tom Moran is what I call, and what has, he's a master of words. Many of you have heard Tom speak in the past. He's a humorous guy, a very humorous guy. Uh, Tom. I do not. Tom is speaking this morning from the dynamic leadership uh, path. And I'm going to turn it over to Samir. Samir will tell us about Tom's objectives for his speech. Samir. So Tom is doing dynamic leadership level three. Know Your Sense of Humor. It is a five to seven minute speech and the title is Humor as a Panacea. And given Tom's previous speeches, I'm sure it'll be quite humorous. Thank you for that, Samir. 
Please help me welcome Tom Moran. Humor as a panacea. Is that a five or seven? Yes. Five to seven minutes, Mr. Timer. Thank you. Welcome Tom Moran. Oh, that's just a trick I played. I wasn't really on mute. I was just humoring you. Humor is a panacea. Often you hear the phrase, laughter is the best medicine. Back in 1979, the New York Post editor, Norman Cousins, wrote a book called Anatomy of an Illness. Norman Cousins credited humor as curing his illness. His illness was undefined. Uh, he went to several doctors. None of the doctors could determine what was wrong with him. However, he was very, very sick. And in this, whole, in this book, he goes on about how humor helped him recover and actually helped him heal. Now, I've heard this saying several times, laughter is the best medicine. But is it really? Is that how it works? Is it just laughter that cures people? Well, a psychologist, this uh, man named Rob Martin, they took up this issue and questioned whether it was actually the humor, the laughter that helped, or was it something else, something more intuitive in the, in the humor? So he did some research on it and he came up with a way of calculating the specific humor that people respond to or that people use. And he developed this system for uh, analysis and he actually came up with a form that you could go through a, a set of 28 questions and come up with your own category of humor that you are comfortable with. Now, humor crosses several lines. Uh, there's the, in this, uh, in this program where you take the test, there's four different categories. And the main styles of humor are affiliative, uh, self-enhancing, aggressive, and self-defeating. Now, they are all kind of broken down into specific kinds. Now, let me go over like the self-defeating is a lot of uh, sarcasm and that type of humor that you use, those types of jokes, those jokes that you use at other people's expenses or expense, I should say. Um, there's the, the aggressive humor, the humor that takes on subject matters that make people uncomfortable. Uh, they may be funny. You may laugh with those people or, or not. They may not find them funny. And there's the self-enhancing humor, the humor that you use when you want people to like you. So it's sort of self-deprecating in a way, the humor that, that you, the people laugh along with you and you laugh along too, because you think it's funny. But the whole concept of the humor is that so people will like you, become involved with you, and you become a cohesive group. But like in many meetings, that I have been in, I have used humor to lighten the mood and to get to know people. It's a kind of like when you do an icebreaker. A lot of people in Toastmasters, when they do their icebreakers, will use humor as, a, as an introduction to themselves. And that immediately relaxes the individual and also the people that are listening to them and make them more acceptable in a, in a group setting. We actually in Toastmasters use this thing called a, a gesture uh, to start our meetings where we use humor to get things off, get things started and get people relaxed and comfortable in, in the meeting. There are many types of humor and some humor these days is not acceptable. There's humor that was used years ago that you just would not get away with that type of story or joke that you could tell about somebody. So I, I took this test 
this 28 questions. And at the bottom, you press a little button on the computer and it will put you in a certain category that you are humorously involved in. Mine was affiliative. Now, affiliative is a self-enhancing humor. And let me read from the report here as to what, what it says. <clears throat> affiliative and self-enhancing humor are also generally adaptive, both correlating to a great mental well-being. Now, this, of course, was the category that I was put in. And many of those types of jokes that are told here are uh, of a, a storytelling. Let me, tell, let me give you an example. And it's one of those Johnny jokes. So Johnny is a is in, in first grade, and his first grade teacher is having a lot of trouble with him. So she takes Johnny down to the principal, and she said, "Johnny, tell the principal what's wrong. Why you're acting out in my class?" And Johnny said, "I'm too smart for first grade. My sister is in third grade, and I'm smarter than she is." And so the teacher takes in and agrees with the principal that they'll give Johnny a little test to see actually if he is that smart. So the teacher asked Johnny, uh, Johnny, how much is three and three? Johnny goes uh, nine or three times three. And Johnny goes nine. And uh, principal says, what about six times six? Johnny goes 36. And so it went on like that. And I asked him several questions and the teacher said no and he was getting them all right so the teacher says now wait a minute wait a minute let me ask Johnny some questions so the teacher asked Johnny what does a cow have four of that I only have two of Johnny thinks for a moment and he says legs hmm principal looks at Johnny mm -hmm. uh, Johnny what do you have in the teacher ask again, Johnny, what do you have in your pants that I don't have? And Johnny looks over at the teacher and looks at his own self and he says, uh, uh, pockets, I have pockets in my pants. And uh, the teacher says, okay, and the principal's getting kind of anxious here because he's not on the same track. And um, the teacher says, well, Johnny, what does a dog do that uh, a man can step into? And, and uh, Johnny says, pants? Mm, maybe, you know. So then she goes on and she asks this other question. The principal's kind of squirming in his chair. He says to the Johnny, he says, uh, uh, the teacher says, what starts with an F? It ends with a K. That means a lot of excitement. Johnny thinks for a minute and he says, fire truck. Mm, very good. And the principal sitting there, he gives a big deep breath of sigh. He says, what a relief. He says, well, Johnny in the fifth grade, I got the last four questions wrong myself. That's kind of a filetative humor. So that's just a little taste of, of humor. I'll be talking more about that as we as we go down the line. I see Phil's got a red card behind him. So I'll stop at that and say, thank you very much, fellow Toastmaster. Thank you, Tom. At this point, I'd like to call for a timer's report. Phil. Yes, Mr. Toastmaster, I do have a timer's report here and Doing the last second, a tabulation. We have Larry at 530.17 for a four to six minute speech. We have Ryan at 632.6 for a five to seven minute speech. And Tom at 836.36 for a five to seven minute speech. So according to timing, Larry and Ryan do qualify. Tom went a little bit over. Mr. To Toastmaster. Thank you, Phil. Fellow Toastmasters, when the poll comes up, we can vote for 
Larry or Ryan, thank you for our participants this morning in our speaking portion of the meeting. We wanted to touch on the theme one more time. One of the reasons I think that I am interested in the flag and flag day would date back to my, my childhood as a Boy Scout. I'm sure some of you were Boy Scouts. I'm sure some of the women may have been Girl Scouts. But as a scout at our weekly meetings, we always said the pledge to the flag and that stuck in my head and it still does today. We learn to respect the flag, you know, keep the flag clean, clean as you would your, your best clothes. When I see uh, tattered flags, it's just a habit that I, I pick them up, especially if I'm in a cemetery. Uh, I'll show you an example. This is, a, it's not a flag you'd fly in the front of your house, but it's just a little small flag that uh, one of the veterans groups may have may have had and just uh, like a lawnmower may have hit a flag and what I'll do with the what I'll do with the flags is I'll contact our, one of the local scout troops and they have a procedure they go through if any of you are interested you can contact the Iroquois Trail Council that's our local council of Boy Scouts and there's a proper procedure that that they use to put the flag to rest when it's tattered and torn. And actually I had the, had the experience, it was Mother's Day weekend, my nephew, uh, actually my niece's husband is a scout leader in Rochester and they had a few flags that they put to rest and they actually burned them. And I missed the actual ceremony for whatever reason, but when I got there, he had already burned them. And it's, I think it's interesting and it's respectful that we have that at our, our availability to do that, especially for all the, all the lives that were lost throughout the years, you know, fighting for the country. I think that's the least we could do is respect our flag and make sure that we keep them in, in good order. Moving into our evaluation portion of the meeting, I would like to introduce our first evaluator, Mike Licata, evaluating Larry McKenzie's speech. Help me welcome Mike. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, once again, fellow Toastmasters, and especially Larry this morning. Larry, I have to give you a lot of credit. I know that as a DTM, you're very, very experienced in your speeches. And as we continue on our pathways journey, when we each time we start a new path, we have to start with an icebreaker. And I want to just say you did a great job of making it different. I know with many experienced club members here at AM Lockport, it's going to get more and more difficult when starting that second path to just not do a generic icebreaker. And I thought that your speech this morning really, really fit in with your engaging humor path. So I want to give you a lot of credit for that, for doing something different and making it unique and memorable. <laughs> Some of the suggestions I would have for after listening to your speech this morning would just be to slow down. I felt that four to six is different than what we're normally used to giving a speech, but at the same time, you still came in at 5.30 so you had a little bit of time to play with, and I think that the stories were great. I just thought that you tried to speak more quickly than normal, and that the stories would have humor in it. You have to, going forward with humor, you have to build in audience response to something different than norm, when you speak normally, that you have to wait for the laughs and the jokes. And I know it's harder to do on Zoom, but as we, progress and prepare to meet in person when you can actually see the audience reactions as you go forward with the engaging humor don't forget to build in the laughs into your speeches going forward so i just want to encourage you to slow down i think that i thought the stories were great this morning i think that 
very much looking forward to this path for you because you have such a great presence and you're going to do a great job going forward. And I want to wish you luck as you go forward this morning. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Mike. Our next evaluator is Dave Lakata, who will be evaluating Ryan Flory's speech. Please help me welcome David. Uh, welcome to Studio A. Now that Studio B is quieted down. <laughs> Ryan, you opened with a series of examples of human behavior, examples that we can all identify with. So that was very clever. And then you really hit home. You hit it out of the park when you said that the average person doesn't like contradictions. And that is indeed correct. And that resonated with me and I hope it resonated with the rest of the audience. But that was a great way to create solidarity with the audience. The examples you used and the information you shared that locked up your audience real tight. And I want to give you credit for that. Great job. But incredibly now I have to quote a rapper. And this is unusual for me to quote a rapper, but please stand up. With a real Ryan floor, please stand up. Ryan, you're a terrific speaker. You did the research. You did the rehearsal. Your presence is terrific. We can still feel the military in you. And we know that you were the soldier that didn't abuse your power when you speak to us. You were the soldier that made the most sense. And that's the whole cake. And if you only stood up, you would have put the icing on the cake. So that's my only point of contention this morning that you made me quote a rapper. But you opened with a question, and that was another great way to rope in the audience. And you gave a great description of how the brain works and how it guides us and sometimes makes us a little bit, you know, presents us with opportunities to commit a foible, a brain foible. So that, that, did, it, that did it well. You did a great job of presenting. You did a great job of research. You shared a great deal of information that the audience could identify with. You called us to action. And I, for one, will act on that. And I think I will work a little harder because I'm a little too easy with information. And I used to always say I need two sources, but I think you're right. I think I need three. Ryan, thank you so much for the speech this morning. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, David. Our next evaluator is Samir Rahman, who will be evaluating Tom Moran's speech. Please help me welcome Samir. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Tom Moran is always an excellent speaker. I thought that this speech was a great one. He had a good starting anecdote that provided, also provided context for many of us that could explain why he would approach this topic, knowing a bit about him and his personal history as we do in this club. It was also informative. There were the four categories of humor, as well as this questionnaire. There were a lot of details to each story. He had good clarity, vocal variety, and audience awareness. Specifically, I think he was, he's always been a very excellent communicator through these Zoom chats, something I myself struggle with. His focus on affiliative humor that culminated in a, an exemplary story was really enjoyable for me. I will say it did seem a little short. So although the context was well paced and informative, perhaps he could have edited the story down a bit or edited some of his intro down 
to ensure that his conclusion was timed correctly. Or perhaps he could have adjusted the pace so that he spoke more quickly at the beginning and then had more time to deliver the humorous story at the end within the time limit. Although five to seven minutes may be tough for such an expansive topic as humor. The ending was really, I thought it was kind of hilarious. It implied a dirty joke without actually requiring the speaker to say anything anything untoward, which is always the best way to deliver such a such content. Overall, I would say it was a really excellent speech. It was enjoyable. I look forward to seeing either the next version on the same topic or an extension, because humor is indeed a panacea. And although we all may not be feeling the same things that require humor, I do feel a sense of solidarity with Tom that many of us could use more humor in our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, for this ex excellent speech. Thank you, Samir. At this point, I'd like to call for a timers report. Phil. Yes, Mr. Toastmaster. My timing report. Michael, two minutes, 19 seconds and 0.39. David, two minutes, 55.03. Sam, two minutes, 17 seconds and 0.63. All three, according to their timing, do qualify. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Phil. At this time, the poll is up. We can vote for best evaluator. I just wanted to share a couple facts that I found on, on uh, Google regarding, regarding Flag Day. Uh, did you know that Pennsylvania is the only state that recognizes Flag Day as a legal holiday? Secondly, in 1916, it was the anniversary of the flag resolution of 1777. It became nationally and a nationally observed event by a proclamation uh, by President Woodrow Wilson. And flag Day was not designated as a national flag day until August 3rd, 1949 by an act of Congress designating June 14th each year as a national flag day. And lastly, three things that you should never do with the flag, or uh, the first thing is the flag should, the flag should never touch the ground. Uh, the second thing, the flag should be flown to fry, fly free. And lastly, it shouldn't be displayed in a manner uh, that it can get damaged or in a damaged, damaged condition. Now that you know a little bit more about Flag Day and why we celebrate it on June 14th each year, I'd like to uh, call for reports, except for the word master will hold for last, and then I will call on our general evaluator, Margo Bittner, for her general evaluation of the meeting. Starting with our Ah Master. Sorry about that. With Jill Roaring. Yeah, well, you said it should have said my name. I would have responded right away. There were not very many ahs or ums in our process today. I did catch a few ums. Chris, both times had some ums. Marty, you had a pause or two, but that's understandable. You spoke the most. There were several crutch words though. The but, the like, the so. Mike Licata, Tom Moran, Larry McKenzie, and Tom Heldwine had several likes. That is my report. Thank you, Jill. Our grammarian report, Beth, Beth Banks. 
Thank you, Marty. I did not really notice poor grammar being used today. I did want to point out Ryan's good use of alliteration, not once but twice. He talked about an esteemed evaluator and single source learning. It just helps your brain to kind of pay attention when alliteration is used. Dave Licata also gave us a good picture when he said locked up real tight. It helps your brain to make pictures, form pictures that really help us in understanding. And that is my report. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Beth. And our tech and gesture master, David Jones. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. I'm gonna to start off with you. I don't know if everybody noticed, but you actually have your um, flag up with duct tape. That was very uh, innovative. Uh, Jill and Steve, I don't know if you all noticed, but they have a little frog in the background there peeking out of the log. I thought that was very cute. Uh, the Beth and the Kate show, uh, obviously using Kate's mic because whenever you're on speaker view, you can't see Beth. Lynn, I hadn't noticed before, but he happens to use a microphone. I don't know if that's always, but I happen to see a little pop up today. Seven of us are using either earbuds or headphones. Uh, Tom, he did his table topics with the speaker or the steering wheel view, but he still had great gestures and energy. Larry McKenzie had great energy, great hand movements during his speech. And Tom Moran, before the meeting, he left his camera on and he left. And with his virtual background, I don't know if you all saw, it was kind of cool. It was like he was walking up the path because of his background. So I thought that was really a neat visual. And finally, I've mentioned it before, but with the technology, we are using the chat to be talking throughout the meeting and it can be distracting and it's something that we would not be doing in person, hopefully. I don't know your club, but hopefully we're not talking during the meeting when people are speaking. Uh, back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, David. Our quiz master, Larry Eggert. Thank you again, Mr. Toastmaster. Again, good morning, fellow Toastmasters. I have a few quizzes today. I, I dove deep into the minutia to be able to do that. First question, what type of eclipse did Steve view the other day? This morning. Oh, I'm sorry, this morning. Partial solar? Annular. 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 Annular, Annular. okay. Number two, what sport did Kate participate in last night? Volleyball. Nah, that was a gimme. <laughs> Len had two quotes, both of which were very good. Who were the authors? Name one of the two authors. Coolidge. Coolidge. Wilson. Wilson. Coolidge. And the Wilson. Other is, the other one is Bryce. Oh, Bryce? Yep. Where is Phil going on Saturday? Skinny Atlas. Meet of me. Atlas. I can say it, but I can't spell Skinny Atlas. <laughs> yeah, it's really. According to Tom Heldwine, that soothsayer, <laughs> who do you never trust? The skinny chef. Darn right. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, according to Ryan, what is the makeup of our brain? The physical makeup. Plastic. Plastic. Plastic sponge. sponge. That's all I have, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Larry. Next, we'll call on our general evaluator, Margot Bittner, and then we'll come back to the Wordmaster report and we'll wrap up with awards and announcements. Margot. Thank you, Marty. But before I go, I think we've got some important business to do because we do need to stand in solidarity, especially with new members. So Kate Banks, I'm gonna turn it over to you for a quick induction, please. Thank you very much, Madam General Evaluator. Okay, Christine is with us. And after some debate on the side, of course we should induct her today. The other two are reinstated members and Christine is a very special brand new member. So thank you, Christine, for joining us and for joining us this morning. Now, okay. 
This is something that we all will work on together in a way. It's just different on Zoom for those of you who haven't seen us do this yet. Fellow Toastmasters, it is now our duty and privilege to induct Christine de Glopper Banks as a new member into the AM Lockport Toastmasters Club. This is an important occasion both for her and for our club. She has come to Toastmasters seeking to improve communication and leadership skills, and we now have an opportunity to help her learn, grow, and achieve. Christine, you are joining a worldwide organization that has helped more than 4 million people learn to communicate more effectively. As members of the AM Lockport Toastmasters Club, you will benefit from a proven program of self-development. You will become part of an outstanding group of people who are dedicated to helping one another in a spirit of sharing and enjoyment. Membership in this club and in Toastmasters International, or TI, is a privilege that carries with it many rewards, yet it also places certain obligations upon you. We are a group of people brought together to do things we could not accomplish alone. Our collective obligation is to grow and improve ourselves and to share our knowledge and experience with fellow members in a spirit of enjoyment. This means that you must work diligently toward your own self-development, also evaluate others' speeches in a spirit of support and sharing, assist the club in reaching its goals, remain positive, and try to keep that smile on your face. We ask you, our newest member, to dedicate yourself to personal growth, to share this great gift with your fellow members, and to help keep this Toastmasters Club strong and dynamic. Christine, you have unmuted yourself, excellent. You will affirm your membership by repeating after me. I, Christine. I, Christine. In the presence of my fellow members. The presence of my fellow members. Of the AM Lockport Club. Of the AM Lockport Club. Make this firm obligation. Make this firm obligation. To attend meetings regularly. To attend meetings regularly. And prepare fully. And prepare fully. To apply myself to the Toastmasters Education Program. To apply myself to the Toastmasters Education Program. To participate actively in club activities. To participate actively in club activities. To evaluate others in a positive manner. To evaluate others in a positive manner. To build open, friendly relationships with my fellow members. To build open, friendly relationships with my fellow members. And to bring other new members into the club. And to bring other new members into the club so that they can also gain the benefits of Toastmasters. They may also gain the benefits of Toastmasters. Thank you, Christine. To our members, please take a look in the chat and you will see our Toastmasters pledge. Okay. <clears throat> please find it in the chat and Christine, you can take a break. Now we take over. And I'd like all of our members to stay on mute to repeat like we do our pledge to the flag. I'll say this, but all of you should say this pledge that you can see in the chat so we don't add to the cacophony. And so we all shall say together, we, the members of the AM Lockport Toastmasters Club, pledge to support you in your quest for self-development, to provide you with positive, helpful evaluations, to maintain a friendly, supportive atmosphere, to give you opportunities to help others, and to make your Toastmasters membership a rewarding and fulfilling experience. Thank you, fellow members. Christine, I will bring your new membership pin to you in person since we are neighbors and welcome formally to the club. Fellow members, I present to you our newest member, Christine de Glopper Banks. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator, and thank you, Christine. 
Thank you, Kate. Appreciate that. Um, and check out my winery uh, joke of the day because I hear that librarians don't like white wine. They prefer it well red. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh. Hey. Oh, I know it's bad. Anyway, on to our evaluate for this morning. Mike did a great job. He had a number of compliments for Larry up front, two suggestions for improvement, and then compliment him at the back. Um, I'd like to throw in one more, and I know it's not really my job, but when you do audience participation, Larry, sometimes it's easier to plant a question or say, hey, so-and-so, I'm going to call on you. That is, sometimes helps get that over that first blank space that you have. Dave did a club sandwich today. He had a number of positives, a suggestion, some more positives, a suggestion, and a lot more positives on the end. And then Samir, again, uh, talked about Tom's speech with some positives up front. I didn't hear, and maybe because my cat was trying to help me at that moment, but I don't know if you mentioned Tom going over time or you sort of wove it in there, but uh, Tom, a belated happy birthday. And maybe that's why you went over time because you were still celebrating from yesterday. Then you had some positives and you did end with some nice encouraging comments at the end. Our Toastmaster of the day obviously was well prepared. He was keeping an eye on the website, keeping things moving. And I know there was a little chat in the background, Dave, because he was trying to figure out exactly how he and I were going to coordinate. And I guess based on that, you wanted to call for the Wordmaster report to make sure everybody used solidarity, Marty, or did you want me to do that? Marty, you're still muted. You can go ahead and ask Kate for the okay. Wordmaster report. Go for it, Kate. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster and Madam General Evaluator. Mokeless used it in the chat. Margo, you may be the winner. I think you used it three times. My mom, uh, Beth won, Jen won, Len once, Phil once at least, Larry Eggert once, our table topics I already reported, and then Marty, I believe twice, Larry McKenzie, Ryan, Tom, and Mokeless. Thank you very much, everybody. Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, which concludes my report. So I guess from there, we can go back to our officer of the day. Rob, Dave, you have a comment to make? I used the word of the day in my evaluation, darn it. <laughs> Everybody use solidarity three times to make it yours. I thought I said, uh, David, I'm so sorry, David. My you're apologies. forgiven. You're, you're, you're already forgiven. Thank you very much. Dave, we need out. clothespins. We need my clothespins. Yes. Yes. Dave and Dave Jones, in case you're unaware, when I'm Wordmaster, I give everybody a clothespin to put on and you can't take it off to use the word of the day. So there's a physical sign of who's used it. And people come up to me years later and tell me what the word of the day was when they had to take off their clothespin. Christy Miller loves that. Anyway, Brian, I am looking, I, I've only got 12 up on my thing. I assume you are here. Would you like to take over and do our awards? I would love to. In fact, I have the pride, the privilege, and the pleasure this morning of introducing <laughs> our award-winning speakers and evaluators. Just first a up, rating all over the place here. <laughs> first up, Thomas Heldwine has taken the Table Topics winner this morning. For evaluator, I am excited to announce that we have a tie. We have a tie between Dave Licata and Samir Rahman. And uh, the speaker was me. <laughs> it's weird announcing for yourself. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call for any further announcements or follow up on the announcements from earlier. Larry. If anyone is out and about this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, on Shawnee Road, it is called the Rustic Buffalo Artisan Center. I will be out there Saturday and Sunday cooking up some delicious food. So if you're in the area, we'll have breakfast, lunch, and some early dinner snacks available or meals. So stop on by Shawnee Road. Uh, what, what times, Larry? 
10 to 5. Okay. Excellent. Any other announcements? Uh, Mr. Presiding Officer, if I may. You may. I, I would just like to point out that my friend, uh, Mr. Licata, failed to credit the quote this morning from one of the most accomplished musical artists of all time, uh, the real slim shady Eminem. Uh, I, I just think when, when people quote somebody, they should uh, at least denote the, the uh, person quoting. Well, Tom, Tom. Yes. Uh, you're absolutely correct. And uh, at the moment, I remember Slim Shady. I remember that he was a rapper. And for someone who has indulged in so many M&Ms over the years, incredibly, that didn't, that didn't come up. And I think it's the drugs I take for uh, type 2 diabetes is killing my brain. <laughs> I better. I, I think I have to chat with. I have to chat with Doctor Junkie on High Street. That's his real name. It's Doctor Junkie on High Street, because uh, these gaps are getting excessive. But I couldn't believe it. I couldn't come up with Eminem. I could see his face. I could see his haircut. I can see his nasty demeanor. But not Eminem. Yeah. But your real you, slim Dave. Your complaint, uh, time is valid. All right, if there are no further announcements, I'd like to go ahead and welcome everybody to go outside today on this bright, beautiful, balmy Thursday. I would like to remind you all about social hour this evening at 7 p.m. The link will be distributed and you should have it in your email from previously. And at this point, provided there's no arguments, I will now adjourn the meeting. <laughs>